and welcome to this edition of EMS Now Up Close. I am Eric Miskell with EMS Now, and it's my pleasure today to speak with uh, Brent Luttrell. He's the Director of Supply Chain at SNY Industries. SNY is an EMS based in Kansas here in the United States. So, Brent, uh, it's good to meet you. I look forward to the opportunity to, to, to learn more about SNY, and we're going to talk about a particular initiative that you have going there. Great to meet you as well. Great. Well, let's begin kind of from the very beginning. Why don't you start by introducing yourself and SNY Industries for the benefit of the audience? Yeah, so Brant Littrell, I've uh, been with SNY Industries for five years now, uh, worked in some supply chain jobs with the railroad before this. Uh, so uh, it's been interesting to see the different aspects of it from this side. Uh, SNY Industries uh, has been around for, it will be 39 years this fall. Uh, so we've been around for a while. Uh, we have a pretty interesting origin story. Our founder, Sandy, S-N-Y, uh, was working for Beach Aerospace, and her husband was an electrical engineer for them, and in his spare time, enjoyed etching circuit boards on his back porch of their farmhouse. <laughs> so uh, through doing this, uh, he had a customer that came to him and said, hey, I could really use somebody to go ahead and populate these boards. And this is 1984, so it's all single-sided through whole components. And at the time, Gary said, you know, I've got so much on my plate now with my job at Beach. They had a hobby farm where he's raising wheat and cattle. He's coaching his kid's t-ball team and just said, no, nope, yeah. yeah. uh, my plate's full. I can't do it. Sandy happened to be at the meeting and said, well, why don't I give it a shot? So she bought a book on hand soldering, taught herself how to hand solder with the sole goal being she wanted to be able to build a company where she could employ their son and she could have like a little family shop and just, you know, kind of a boutique shop uh, populating some circuit boards. From that start, they grew pretty quickly uh, to the point where they needed more space than just the back porch. So they end up getting some uh, land and a building here in Winfield, Kansas, a town of uh, about 12,000 people and started growing from there. So for the first 20 years or so of the company, uh, probably more like 15, they were exclusively a boutique supplier to a few aerospace companies up in Wichita. So Wichita's had a long legacy within the aerospace industry. So a lot of the work was kind of spinning out what was needed to support those companies in Wichita. And then uh, late 90s happened, surface mount technology started taking off. Uh, they get their first surface mount machine in the late 90s. And now, you know, we're a company of about 120 people. We've got uh, roughly 70,000 square feet of manufacturing space, uh, over 100 active customers and have really seen just an explosion of growth that I think a, a lot of North American EMS companies have seen across the past decade. And then, you know, when you look down the road, you say, wow, you know, where we're at today, uh, we, we could see this continuing to grow for the next, you know, 20, 30 years. Electronics are, are going into everything. And from being exclusively a company that supported the aerospace industry, now that's still a significant part of our business, but, you know, we're talking 10, 15%. So we've diversified out uh, across all kinds of different companies, whether that's uh, the growth we've seen in me medical devices or just your commercial industrial and now with all the IoT stuff. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. So mostly the high mix kind of industries. Yeah, we actually were just running through those numbers uh, and trying to say, well, what's, a, what's our bread and butter? The, the average work order across our shop floor is 100 pieces. So, you know, we're, we're running larger batches than that on our surface mount. But once you split those work orders out into through hole into, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50. Mm -hmm. But uh, really interesting that after all these years, you know, we are still that low run high mix. Uh, that tends to be where we are the most competitive and the most relevant for our customer base. Right. And that customer base, all domestic? Yes. Uh, so we are exclusively domestic. Uh, that being said, our boards travel internationally. So we have customers that have sales arms uh, globally. So we're, we're pretty, pretty happy that if you follow the tether from S&Y, you can see us touching all the continents. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, no, I've been aware of you guys for some time. You put out some good uh, blogs, too. And uh, it's been it's been interesting to watch and to, to learn more about you. 
Now, you've just gone through a um, implemented uh, or recently a uh, custom purchasing solution within the yeah. Furness and Y. Tell us about that. Well, the, the story behind that is really interesting as well. So this goes back to right about two years ago now. I think we sent out our first letter to customers warning them of the part shortage that we were starting to see in February of 2021. So we recognized that the market was shifting. We started seeing lead times go up. That directly impacted our ability to, to process new sales orders and get them through the purchasing department, get them out to the shop floor. As those lead times started increasing, uh, it broke our purchasing department, to, to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest. We just had a dual threat problem of, one, you're trying to go and find what we call the golden screws yeah. on yeah. all of your different assemblies. And two, because your team is now spending all their time trying to go find one or two parts, we were struggling to process new orders. So through that, we recognized pretty quickly, number one, we needed to expand our team. So that was the, the easiest layup solution that we could do. Okay, we'll get more people in purchasing. So as we did that, we recognized that we had some really outstanding individuals in purchasing and there's not a magic tree that you can go pick people from. So we couldn't gain the efficiencies we needed just by hiring alone. So that's when we started looking for software solutions uh, and came across a video of a CTEC ERP and CalcuQuote talking about this new purchasing integration they were working on, which uh, essentially, you know, kind of takes your layups for you in the purchasing world. So it's going to get all of your passive components that are readily off the shelf. You're going to be able to utilize the APIs that CalcuQuote has built out through their Quote CQ format mm -hmm. and their Shop CQ format, and then pull your demand directly in uh, from CTEC. So build that bridge between those two systems and allow your throughput to go up with without having to massively increase the staff. So that was the vision of it. Uh, and then we've spent the last year working to execute that and have been really fortunate to have some extremely talented people at both CalcuQuote and CTEC that have helped us get there. Yeah. So prior to uh, this implementation, was it Excel? What were you using before? <laughs> it was Excel. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are, you know, a job shop. So mm -hmm. we had always processed orders job to job and we'll consolidate down demand when and where we can. But uh, the, the math gets really complex really fast when you say, well, I have this, you know, passive component over here. And for customer number one, they have one sub. Customer number two uses the same part. They have two subs and customer number three has three subs, but two of them are different from the other two. Mm -hmm. So you start getting into this, uh, you know, head spinning demand cycle that's really challenging to just process using Excel sheets. Yeah. So yeah. what uh, what CTEC was able to do is use what's called a part spec group. So it does all that math behind the scenes and says, these are the components that you're going to need, consolidates that down. We're able to then pull that directly into CalcuQuote. And then once we execute the POs, push that directly back into CTEC. So in addition to helping us consolidate the demand down, it also eliminated roughly 150, 200,000 lines of data entry that our team was having to go back and do. So it's really been, I mean, just an absolute game changer on our ability to scale mm -hmm. and being in a position where we feel like, okay, we can scale on the purchasing and sales order side that has had direct downstream, downstream benefits to what we can do on our shop floor, which is ultimately, you know, we're, we're just support. We want to make sure that we keep our shop floor humming. You know, yeah. we, they, yeah. they've got to have kits. We've got to keep them going. They need to have the ability to plan and by being able to execute better upstream from them in purchasing, it has a direct impact on what they can do on throughput. And so what did that do? What were the results that you ultimately achieved then through this? Uh, so we went live with CTEC in, in January and we were trying to be cautious switching systems where, you know, you don't want to put too much in and, and end up breaking something. So our first real full month was February. And we processed about 800, between 800 and 1,000 demand lines, which is 
not nearly where we would need to be, but it was a good start. We went live with the CalcuQuote CTEC integration in the middle of March. And from the middle of March, so I think March 12th through the end of the month, we processed 6,000 demand lines. So it was immediate, tangible, and the, the biggest fear we had when we were going through the implementation phase was, well, did we just come up with a, a really good way to spend money? And I think like all EMS companies, we've been fighting inventory bloat, you know, the golden screw problem, you know, you've got 98 parts of a hundred line bomb and you're paying for the 98 before you get the last two and just puts you in a really vicious cash flow cycle. And, and what we've seen now that we've been live for about 90 days is our inventory stayed flat. We want our inventory to go down very much, yeah. but to be able to process, you know, 20 X demand lines and not see a massive spike in inventory levels has been huge. And now we're actually at a point where we've worked through that backlog that we built up and we're starting to see what we hope is, is the light at the end of the tunnel where our future receipts don't look nearly as intimidating as what it did 90 days ago when we were going, oh my gosh, how do we, how do we process this mountain of demand in a way that supports our customers to the best of our ability without, you know, having to say, oh, we'll bring in five more million dollars of inventory on top of the, you know, $10 million of inventory that you're already sitting on yeah. because that you, there's got to be a balance there and you've got to make sure that you're kind of serving both masters in terms of making sure you support your customers and also keeping the cash flow in a position where it's not going to cripple the company's ability to execute. Yeah. What about the internal operations? Was this, is this a streamlined things for you then? Uh... So we're, we're the great thing about working with, with CalcuQuote and CTEC is that we are iterating constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, so it initially started where we had to run some SQL scripts, which was a little more complex. And we only had a couple of people here that could do it. Well, we got that process opted or automated and now we're able to just download and then upload our demand mm -hmm. and here within the next 30 days that's going to be fully integrated to an api so we'll be able to push a button and calcuquote it will completely pull our demand in and then we push it right back out and once we've got that now we're really dynamic in terms of what portions of our demand we want to attack you know you may not want to run the what we're calling the MSP material supply plan wide open, you may want to run a subset of that data for specific customers or specific orders. And we'll really be able to kind of use a scalpel as we go to to approach our demand cycles, which is going to be great for our team. We're doing that now. It's just a little bit more time consuming on the front end. And then the other thing that we're extremely excited about is there's another API bridge that allows us to update our bills of materials so when you've got all of these substitute components you have to have a plan for how am i going to most efficiently use what i've got in my stock room so with the material supply plan it's doing that math for us and the api solution should be live actually here in the next couple of weeks where we'll be able to instantly go and update and swap out components. So you may need to split between two different components or possibly three different components, but you'll be able to run the material supply plan, instantly make those updates to those work orders. So then when the stock room uh, gets the bill of material to go and pick off the shelf, they're just going and picking the components they need. Whereas today, and traditionally what we've always had to do is they'll go pick what they can and they'll come back and say, hey, I need you know 100 more of this, 50 more of that. And then on the front of house staff is going through and saying, okay, so split this line here, split that line there. You're actually gonna to wanna to swap over to a different component on this line. And so there's a lot of back and forth, which as we all know, just adds time. Yep. So MSP's goal is to drive your inventory numbers down to zero. And then on the front end of that process, it's trying to optimize your buys. So you're consolidating down on the front end, you're trying to drive down to zero on the back end, and it puts you where you, we should, in theory, be able to turn our inventory a lot more quickly and also execute 
kit completion a lot more quickly than what we're able to do today. Okay. Now, I would just, hearing you talk about this, I just imagine that, that your team doing this work has got to be less stressed too, right? I mean, it, it seems like they get to work at a higher and be, be smarter about the work they're doing and really be, be able to do better planning. The, the biggest surprise we have had is what this has done for morale. I mean, I think anybody that's been in supply chain for the last two years would tell you we've seen turnover on our team. We've got people that are just stressed to the max. Everybody's out there every day trying to execute as well as they can, but it's just such an insurmountable problem and so much bigger than what one person or one team can do. So being able to bring these automated solutions to the table it gives our team a little bit of just relief where they can breathe and say, mm -hmm. now we can do the important work. Now let's go through and solve the problems. Mm -hmm. Because what we found is most of these supply chain concerns are solvable. Now they're gonna want $50 for a $2 IC, but you can, you can do that work. That's, mm -hmm. you know, out of our 30,000 demand lines that we might have, we've got, you know, three or 400 of them that are gumming up the works. So being able to turn our team loose on solving the three or 400, as opposed to trying to globally manage the whole thing mm -hmm. has been just a, a complete game changer for us. Yeah. Now, I, and you struck a good point there. I think the whole issue of the supply chain burnout that was going on over the last for these teams was was real. And, uh, you, you know, here in Kansas, but also, you know, in other EMS around the world that I visited and, and spoken to, it was a common theme over the last few years. So it's good to hear that uh, these solutions are, are helping the way they're intended to. Right. So. Yeah, and that's where it, it, it goes back to, you know, I think uh, anybody that, that is playing in the EMS space that, that hasn't talked to CalcuQuote, uh, those guys in terms of what they're trying to accomplish for supply chain, uh, that's where, you know, we want to get out there and talk about it because without those partnerships, without the API integrations that CTEC has built out on their platform, I mean, these are people that want to solve our problems. Yeah. And that's really uh, what we've been looking for for the last two years is saying we we know that everyone's got this problem. So, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. So mm -hmm. the, these companies are out there yeah. actively yeah. working and trying to solve uh, the problems that that anyone in the EMS space is going through. And just out of curiosity, what was the learning curve like for the implementation and, and getting used to the tools as they when they came in? You know, we with CalcuQuote, we've been with them for five years now. So originally signed up for their Quote CQ platform. We immediately saw what that did on the quoting side. You know, we were living in spreadsheets and then a formula breaks and there's only one guy in the office that can fix it. And so it, it was quoting would take us anywhere from, you know, three to four weeks. And we were able to shrink that down to a couple of days on quoting. So once the Shop CQ platform came out, uh, we immediately were like, okay, we want to, we want to use it. But with our, our previous ERP, we were using it, they, we could not get the two systems to work together. It was more of a legacy uh, system that didn't have the web-based, you know, API plugins. So we started going, okay, how do we make stuff rhyme with what we see the CalcuQuote team doing? Mm -hmm. And then we ran across uh, CTEC who was uh, actively working on integrations with them. And we said, okay, that makes sense. So from a learning curve, it was actually fairly easy for us. Uh, the the CTEC ERP platform is extremely intuitive. So anybody who is familiar with navigating a web-based system, uh, it all kind of makes sense. You know, their terminology is really good in terms of matching up to what you're used to in the EMS space. Their their whole system is really designed for EMS. So. It, it really made it make sense. Whereas I think with a lot of ERPs, they're more OEM based. So having someone that had already had experience dealing with EMS companies and then actively wanting to work with the CalcuQuote team and say, yeah, we think that's a great idea. What they're doing with ShopCQ isn't what we want to do as an ERP. So let's just make the two systems work together. Yeah. That, you know, and as I hear you talk, it strikes me that this is, it's, it's these types of tools that are allowing companies like yours to be competitive here or more competitive within the market um, for those, I think the small, medium-sized ones. 
uh, who to really position yourselves for you know as as we hear the trend the, the the trend of manufacturing coming back to the United States, right? To what extent? Time will tell. But uh, speak to that. How do you how do you view that? Yeah, you know, we've always had the view at SNY of well, we want SNY first. Like we want you to pick us. Yeah. But if you don't we would prefer that you stay in the US and we would prefer that you stay with like someone that we would consider a competitor. You know, there's the San Minas and Jables and Foxcons of the world. We, we hope that uh, they'll, they'll stay with a small and medium size. We think there's some advantages there. And the disadvantage that we've traditionally had against those larger EMS companies, the tier ones, is they already had custom software. They had these teams in house that were building these types of solutions and now with companies like CalcuQuote and CTEC, these solutions are available for small and medium sized companies. You know, I, I spoke to it earlier, we're in a town of 12,000 people, you know, we're not going to attract, you know, Stanford uh, software graduates to come to Kansas and build solutions for us, nor could we afford them even if we could convince them to come here. Yeah. So being able to find partners in the space and essentially using our competition to help us all scale uh, we kind of feel like it's a right, rising tide will lift all boats scenario where, you know, if we can just become better as the small and medium sized companies of cooperating where we can and mm -hmm. leveraging these types of platforms, that's going to give us more power in the marketplace to go to vendors and, and to go to our suppliers and leverage them to say, hey, we need you to build out these these API integrations and these webhooks, because you know you don't have to be dealing with a giant OEM or a tier one EMS company to have this make sense for your business. And the more people that we can get to to leverage this type of software solution within the EMS space, uh, the better it's going to be for all of us. Yeah. No, and you strike a good point there about the whole idea of right sizing. You know, for within those those outsourcing relationships and. Not all are the big, you know, the big, huge OEMs of the world. And, and what they need is oftentimes better served by the smaller and medium sized uh, EMS companies. Uh, yeah. So that's SMY. Yeah. The, you know, speaking to our, our average work order on the shop floor, you know, there, there is a lot of opportunity in the electronics industry to build those low run, high mix type solutions. Even if an OEM does have a tier one relationship, there's going, going to be assemblies that Foxconn's going to tell you, no, thanks. I don't want to build that. Yeah. So just by being open and available to work with those types of organizations, and then we, we really like to play in the startup world as well. So going and finding those really cool stories. Uh, we've had some, some great ones in the medical device manufacturing space. We had the opportunity to uh, uh, build ventilators a couple of years ago from a company that we were with from before they even had their FDA approval. And then they get picked by uh, the government and we were able to build hundreds of thousands of those assemblies uh, back during the pandemic. So we love those small companies. We wanna see them grow. We wanna grow with them. Mm -hmm. And solutions like this are, are what ultimately are gonna allow us to, to scale and be able to continue to do that as we go forward. Yeah, you know, uh, I like to think that EMS now we we help elevate the stories within the industry, and yours is certainly a great one. And this is a great case study to show how competitive and how these tools uh, can make you know companies, smaller companies, still world class in their capabilities and serving their customers. So, um, so I appreciate you taking the time to, to to tell that story and share it with us today. Uh, you're a great interview, so hopefully we can do this again sometime. Uh, no, you really are, and you have a real passion as you're telling the story here, and it comes through, um, and I appreciate that. So uh, so thank you for the time, and let's definitely get caught up again in the future. Yeah, yeah, I hope to do it. Um, you know, this is such a fun industry, and, you know, our, our founder, Sandy, is still uh, going strong, working with us. We're still a family-owned company. And we were having lunch uh, a couple months ago and she was like, you know, what, what better industry could you possibly be in right now than, than in the EMS space? There's, there's so much out there and that's where, you know, working with, with our software partners, you know, we, we want to bring a collaborative approach to the industry where we can say, hey, we might compete on some specific customers here and there. 
but it makes so much more sense for uh, the, the US North American EMS space to take a collaborative stance and find ways that we can help the industry be better because that's how we're gonna keep stuff on shore or bring it back. Yeah. I, I think there's there's so much out there that, that we could be doing, uh, whether it's bringing stuff back or just you know helping make sure we're ready to uh, bring on those innovative companies and, and watch them grow. Like we, I, I believe we can do it. And with some of the partners that we've got, uh, you know, sky's the limit on where we yeah. could see yeah. this industry go in the next 20 yeah. years. Yeah, and I love that point because you strike a, a chord with me because years ago, I remember EMS wasn't seen as such an attractive industry, right? And I think, and, and getting people to come work in it has become more of a challenge uh, over the years. But, you know, these have become very highly technical, right? You need technical skills. They're great for, for skill development for people. And it's an exciting environment with all kinds of very cool tools and equipment now that they get to utilize. Uh, and and I think you're right. I think we're well positioned to uh, uh, to have a good future in this country and frankly in other parts of the world as well. Yeah, the, it, electronics are not going anywhere, and the need for the types of services that S and Y and other EMS companies have is not going anywhere. So we just need to uh, you know keep finding finding those people that are seeking to solve problems. Like we, we all know what they are, especially in the last two years with the supply chain issues. But I really believe that through that, uh, it's definitely made us a stronger company. And you know, we wanna, we wanna continue to find those challenges and, and leverage our relationships, whether it's with our, our competition or with our software partners, with our own people to find those solutions that are, are, are gonna help uh, all of our customers continue to grow. Yeah. Well said, well said. Well, Brent, thank you for this. Uh, this has been excellent. It's a great story and uh, glad to, to, to be able to sit here and talk to you about it. So um, thank you for your time. Let's definitely catch up again in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't wait till uh, we've got another project that we've been working on that uh, we can talk about. It's a lot of absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Thank and, you. So much. Thank you for what you're doing. I, I really think yeah. that uh, the message that you guys put out uh, it is extremely helpful to the industry. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Good. Take care, Brent. Yep. You too. Thanks.